I just like uh, to play chess and uh, if you win some title or something, it's not over. You just want to continue and to, to win uh, more games, uh, to play uh, nice chess. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome to our September edition of our FIDE podcast of the Year of Women in Chess. After a short summer break, we're back to introduce you to some more amazing and inspiring women in the world of chess, including chess players, authors, coaches, journalists, and streamers. The podcast is a collaboration of the Chess Sports Association, the FIDE Women's Commission, and the German podcast Schachgebiet. Today's guest carries a Grandmaster title and has a current rating of 2,439. Ten years ago, from 2012 to 2013, she was the Women's World Chess Champion. She's also a key player for her national team. Indeed, her national team managed to win seven medals at Olympiads with her as a team member, the most recent one being the gold medal at the Olympiad in Chennai, India, just over a month ago. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome today's guest, Grandmaster Anna Oshanina, in today's podcast. Welcome, Anna. It's a great pleasure to have you as a guest today. Let's jump straight in with our first question. So it has become a bit of a tradition uh, of this podcast that we ask our guests at the beginning of the podcast to tell us a little bit about their country. So Anna, you come from Kharkiv in Ukraine, one of the areas which is most severely impacted by the Russian invasion at the moment. How are you doing at the moment with this situation? And do you still want to tell us a little bit about Ukraine as a country and what the chess culture is like there? Uh, well, yes, uh, now what's happened, uh, a big, huge tragedy for everybody uh, in Ukraine and uh, in the world. Uh, um, well, but it was not all the time like that. Uh, before, it was a very nice country, very charming, beautiful. Uh, people, people are nice. And uh, also before people get used to play chess a lot and chess was very popular in in Ukraine uh, because it's one of post-Soviet countries and uh, uh, I guess everybody still remember that matches uh, where participated Kasparov, Karpov, Korchnoi um, and everybody were following uh, this match. Uh, everything was uh, uh, in newspapers, uh, on TV. So it was quite popular. And I guess uh, maybe also that's why I I uh, was started to play <laughs> because um, it's popular and interesting. And I was going to chess club. Well, also. We had uh, some grandmaster, and uh, many people said it was strong chess school, and also um, including our city, especially because we had uh, grandmaster like uh, Savon. He was a, a great player, and uh, and uh, like had uh, some um, achievement, very, very brilliant. Uh, and of course, it was a pleasure to learn from such uh, players, like uh, old school, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, yeah, this old school of, uh, of yeah. chess players. Uh, they like, uh, you know, more like strategy or something. <laughs> Yeah, it must be quite inspiring to start playing chess in such a historical chess country. Um, maybe let's actually start with the how you, how you got into chess, because I, I read online somewhere that actually your mom decided that you should learn a little bit about like culture and, and kind of like intellectual and create get like intellectual and creative talents. And therefore, apparently she introduced you to chess painting and music. Is that true? Uh, well, yes, <laughs> that's true, but it was not uh, just actually like that. Uh, it was like um, I like to play play chess with my uh, grandfather and grandmother. And when I was a kid, like maybe five or six years, and after some time, I started to I don't know. Um, 
uh, Torino something and uh, they decided to put me in chess club, you know. Uh, but it was not like for professional or something, it just like uh, for hobby. And also the same was uh, with uh, music and uh, painting. And it was like a bit of everything for, I don't know, for hobby, for for kids doing something at his free time, you know, after school, <laughs> because we had a lot, plenty of time. So, but of course, one day going to painting, another day uh, to, to some guitar, uh, like that, you know. Yeah. And then, but then someone realized that you're quite talented at chess straight away, I guess, because you, you started winning tournaments pretty early. Uh, well, um Uh, well, uh, first, uh, uh, it was it was not that un unclear because uh, I had no, I, I didn't have quite, you know, like a real coach, and I just was going to club and uh, to play to uh, to play a bit uh, with uh, another kids, and uh, when I started to win uh, all of them. Uh, without uh, like doing nothing, you know. Uh, then yes, uh, like uh, I started to participate in some like uh, tournaments or something, um, going to 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 chess club where is uh, these old masters, you know, <laughs> playing to 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 maybe to learn a bit from them, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and then I, I think you started winning also like national championships, like for the girls already, like at like a super early age. And then what time did like what age did you then start like? So at the beginning, this was all a hobby. And then when did you start playing a bit more competitively? And for example, do you still remember what was your first big international tournament? Oh well, I started to play uh, this um, national uh, tournaments. Uh, quite uh, um i guess uh, when i was about nine or something like that uh, uh, before that uh, i don't remember i played uh, this uh, like ukrainian championship or something uh, i guess it was under 10 i was started under 10 12 uh, sometimes i played uh, some years uh, like up uh, And my first um, tournament abroad, it was in Austria. Austria under, I guess, under 12, uh, under 12 European Championship. Uh, it was not quite su successful for me because, uh, like, you know, it was my first tournament uh, and a lot of worries and, uh, well, also a lot of stro strong kids uh, with... Uh, with um, their trainers, you know. I remember there was even um, Nona Gaprindashvili, I guess. It's first time uh, I saw her and uh, she was like a coach and it was like quite surprising, you know. <laughs> yeah, that must have been quite impressive, I can, I can imagine. Yes, yes, yes. She was with yeah. uh, Georgian uh, girls and uh, was very also like emotionally, you know. Yeah. Yeah, quite inspiring. And then basically you played chess as a as a hobby, I guess, during during high school. And then did you decide after school to to go for a professional chess career or when when or did you decide first to do something else? Like did you did you, did you like go to university or start like another daytime job or was it very clear from you early on or like that you wanted to do chess professionally? Uh well, um No, of course, I, I was going to university. I was like uh, doing um, like management to a sport, you know, like this uh, near the sport stuff. Uh, and um, I guess during uh, uh, my study in university, it was like more like I decided to be like more professional, you know, uh, because um, I like I like already to, to play chess, to play tournaments so like this. Uh, competitions uh, yes it was like about after school and uh, this time in, uni in university interesting yeah and nowadays you do chess like full-time sorry you do chess full-time now as a full-time profession so what does like um what, what does like a typical day or like a typical week in your in your life look like like what can we imagine a typical chess life to look like 
Yes, for now it's like uh, only chess, uh, sometimes also uh, teaching chess, uh, uh, like in other students, you know. Um, well, uh, as usual, I guess it's like you prepare something, you watch some games, uh, um, um, watch online, also online chess, uh, what's going on there. Uh, like that, uh, it's quite difficult to explore everything, like um, how it's going on, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And did you also work like specifically on your physical health or like mental strength, for example? Are these also topics you actively focus on? Uh, well, a bit. Uh, I did a bit uh, like physics. I um, before I, um, I was a bit uh, doing running uh, this stuff. Uh, now mm -hmm. it's less, but uh, I'm thinking to 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 back to this because it's like uh, makes you more healthy. I don't know, like more in shape or something. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. when you're playing chess uh, tournament or something, chess game, it's uh, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard because long games, like, I don't know, four or five hours, need to be in good physical shape. Dear listeners, we would like to use the opportunity of having Anna as a guest from Ukraine to remind you about the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine. Whereas the news coverage of what happens in Ukraine becomes less present as time passes, the situation there is still difficult, with many people dying and even more suffering. We just want to remind you that we stand with our Ukrainian chess friends and the people in Ukraine. These people still need our continuous support. If you would like to donate in support of Ukraine, we will link some of the many charities in the description below. Every little helps. Thank you. Yeah, maybe let's go a little bit more into your tournament successes, actually, so our listeners also get to know you a little bit better. So maybe let's focus on the team competitions first um, and maybe start with the Olympiads, because I think Ukraine is one of the most successful countries in the women's section, winning a total of two gold, three silver and three bronze medals, I think. And you were astonishingly part of that team for seven of these medals. What do you think makes the Ukraine such a successful team at the Olympiads? And is that a tournament you, you particularly enjoy or like, yeah, because you also always had like very good results at it. Uh, well, not all the time we, we, we have some medal. It's not true. Sometimes like um, more time, of course, we have a medal, but sometimes it's not so very successful. But um I guess uh, it's because we have a strong team, that's all, like, uh, uh, one of strongest team, and uh, you will have a medal, it's for sh it's almost for sure, like, uh, if everybody in shape, you know, it's most mm -hmm. important, uh, like, from in your team, everybody play well, if somebody play bad, so it's very hard to, uh, to, want some, to win something, and uh, that's main... Uh, question like uh, for everybody to be in shape and for example our first olympiad uh, my first olympiad <laughs> it's my first olympiad was uh, uh, in 2006 uh, in italy and the, at the time it was like three plus one three players and one reserve and uh, we won uh, the time like like very easy you know like with uh uh, I don't know, <laughs> like, I don't know if there will be, I don't know, maybe 10 rounds more, we will win uh, 10 rounds more, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> everybody is a time played, uh, like, uh, very well in shape and, you know, like, uh, very good. Yeah. And uh, this year, it seems like also everyone was in a fantastic shape because, uh, so the Chess Olympiad took place in, in Chennai in India just over maybe over a month ago. So do you want to tell us a little bit about the tournament, how it went for you guys this time and how you personally kind of like what your personal feels were about the tournament? Well, I guess this time uh, we were in optimal, um, uh, with optimal uh, players and uh, uh, I don't know, 
it was uh, maybe yes, maybe you're right. Like everybody played well, and uh, we did what uh, we could. But also till last round, it was not that clear because you know, uh, truthfully to say, uh, it was uh, like highest chances that India will win because mm-hmm. like uh, they was leading all the time and uh, the team was good. Okay, sometimes they make draw or something like, you know, and of course they had a lot of lucky. So, of course, um, I know it was like almost no doubt they will win because also is in India, like so much support and, you know, like, uh, like you're at home in even walls helps you. <laughs> so... In the last round, uh, so it was like fight uh, for for second, second and third place, uh, actually. <laughs> I mean, before be, be, before the round, because uh, who could know that uh, India will lose that last, last match? And uh, I guess if they make draw, they were first. Yeah, yeah, it was a it was a heartbeat final because, uh, as you said, so India was in the lead and Ukraine, I think, started in fourth position and yes. India the last game three ones against the US. Um, for your personal match, I thought in last round you were playing uh, Olivia Kilobosa, who played a really strong tournament. So, what was your kind of expectation going into the last game? No, she she played uh, very good and had a brilliant result. <laughs> and uh, I had never played with her before, and uh, it was like a bit. Uh, um, I feel like a bit strange because okay, with such result and you never played with such opponent, you don't know what to expect. Also, this is last round, uh, like a bit of pressure. Also, the round uh, in the early mo- morning. So, well, I just wanted to play solid and okay, we will see what will be, you know. And uh, well, she played uh, well. And okay, of course, she could play uh, played a bit better some moves, but okay, overall, she played bad. And uh, in the end, I guess it was uh, draw, like uh, it was looking like easy draw, you know. Like, okay, yeah. okay, and okay, I think, okay, draw, draw, what, what to do? But then uh, she made some some mistakes. I guess she also saw it was like, it, it should be draw very easy, you know. And after she made some mistakes and already it's not uh, draw and uh, and we won the match. Um, but <laughs> it's like yeah. that, yes. Yeah, amazing. So everything worked out for Ukraine. You managed to finish in the first position. So congrats again on that. Thank you. Um, thank you. I also wanted to ask, if you go to these tournaments um, like the Olympiad, you know, for me as a viewer, I always see a lot about the atmosphere there. But can you as a player, are you so focused on the tournament or that you basically just focus on your chess? Or can you actually take in this atmosphere like did you go to like for example this opening uh, ceremony or do you have like a chance to kind of I don't know like enjoy the ver- famous Bermuda party or are you like basically one of these players that focuses completely on her tournament uh, unfortunately we didn't go to those open ceremony because we were just uh, just tired, tired after many hours of uh, of travel and we stayed yeah. stay in the hotel but uh, free day we, we join a lot we uh, go out and to uh, um, to show around uh, uh, this old famous stuff you know and actually we like a lot like uh, i don't know we join a lot and and uh, I don't know, maybe one day we will come back to India to visit more places because such a, a old uh, culture, history, you know, it's quite impressive. Yeah, yeah. And what what is the atmosphere? What was the atmosphere like in the Ukrainian team during the... Because you said the strongest team always wins, but I feel like very often in these team competitions, it's quite important to have a, a good atmosphere in the team and for players to get along. No, no, no. We are fine. Uh, uh, everything was so smooth without any, any conflict or something. Like, uh, we just wanted to play... Uh, our best and that's all like you know 
like yeah. uh, like all the time and we will see what will be <laughs> yeah then maybe we can move a little bit away from from the team competitions and talk a little bit about your individual successes um the biggest one or one of the biggest ones i don't know what you actually rate personally your biggest one but uh, for me it's probably winning the Wom women's world championship which you did in 2012 yeah um, and i think back then it was like uh, this knockout format with 64 players and you were actually seated in position 30 i think when i checked up so like one of the the well like in the middle somewhere so what were your ambitions to go into the tournament did you just like do you kind of like set yourself a goal in these tournaments or do you just go in saying okay i want to play good chess no that is like a, you when you go to any tournament you cannot uh, say uh, i will win or something you of course you want to win but uh, on the other hand you want to just uh, to show the good uh, play and uh, and to good good games uh, and okay if you if everything will be good you can uh, win you know <laughs> i mean uh, but at the tournament, I just wanted to to show good uh, um, play, and uh, we will see what will be, you know. Yeah, and then of course that went very smooth. So first it was the the knockout stage, and it, how how does it work? So you went to that tournament with a coach, or you just went by yourself and you had like a preparation? Like what kind of how how was it during the tournament? Like how how does it work for you? Well, well, uh. Actually, on the tournament I was alone, but uh, during the tournament uh, I I got uh, some help from uh, from Anton Korobov. At that time, uh, uh, we a bit um, how to say um, worked together or something. He was helping me, so I guess it was uh, also one part of the success. The success, you know. Because Anton is very uh, good uh, person, good uh, uh, advices, and uh, I guess it uh, was quite uh, smart, you know, that he was helping me at the time. Yeah. And then I guess the knockout part of these tournaments is always quite, well, risky, because like any mistake could, could make you get kicked out. Then you made it to the final in which you played Antonetta Stefanova. So what what was that final like for you? Like, was that kind of, was there a key moment through that final when you realized, okay, I, I'm in here to win this? And I'm also always wondering, like, how, how do you handle your nerves during such important games? Uh, well, at some, at some point, you just uh, don't think about, you just uh, play and focus on the game. Um, it's already after the game, you start to nervous, to think like, uh, okay, tomorrow, I don't know, I need to make draw. And if I make draw, I will win this tournament. And I could not make draw, I lost. <laughs> and... Uh, and after you need to, again to play, you know, um, it's all you think before before the the games and during the match you, during the game you already uh, focus uh, on just on the chess, you know, and uh, try to play your best. Sometimes yeah. it works, sometimes not. <laughs> The time that it's... sounds very easy you know like I feel like it for me and I, I play at a much much lower level so I'm like a club player I, I struggle much more like dealing with these pressure situations and for me I'm not playing for anything like a women's world championship title yeah <laughs> but yeah okay so that was like when you won your first big title and do you feel like did anything majorly change for you after? Like, for example, was it like a boost in self-confidence or did you get up invited to more tournaments or was it kind of like everything just stayed a little bit how it was and it was just for you privately that you reached this goal? No, I, I was just happy I, I won this because it's like uh, uh, you could play chess for all your life and and you will you will not achieve the the title. You know, of course, I was very happy and uh, only I understood that uh, okay, chess and uh, you can win uh, like everybody. You know, if uh, everything is good, like like that. You know. But mm. um, not so much changes, you know. No. Uh, I don't mention that. 
Yeah. And then if I'm not mistaken, the championship format was changed subsequently. So basically in the year after that, it wasn't the knockout system, but like the new format, the winner of the women's Grand Prix, in this case, who you fan was basically allowed to challenge you as the current champion. Um, and you lost that match five and a half, one and a half. So this must have been quite a disappointment, I guess. What What do you think went wrong during that tournament? Or or do you think, like, it wasn't anything particular and in the end, you know, she just played very strongly? Uh, well, um, I guess I just uh, prepared not quite well to the match and uh, uh, I did not... Ex- well, I did not uh, maybe ex- expect uh, how it will be because... Uh, um before that uh, i never played uh, such matches or something like like uh, of course i played this knockout or something but long match uh, uh, i didn't play and it was some some specific uh, um but also i want to mention like uh, it was in china and this uh, it was like uh, weather was very humid humidity humidity and uh, like was very very hard to go out and like for me it's very hard to to be inside all the time like you know with this air conditioner and you can go out and if you go out it's like you almost die uh, it, well this was uh, hard also some some other moments but uh, main stuff uh, in my opinion uh, just uh, was not well uh, prepared for for the match uh, uh, that's all mm-hmm. How how do you generally prepare? So I because you're like continuously working on your chess, of course. Um, but then I guess like for for big tournaments, you particularly uh, prepare beforehand in terms of like openings. And I guess that was one of these tournaments where you had a specific preparation for. Uh, for 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 much for this or yeah. Uh, well, yes, I guess uh, she was prepared a bit better. Uh, sometimes su- surprised me with opening, and uh, well, if I if I could come back, uh, come back, of course I would uh, uh, change uh, some stuff uh, with my preparation, and for sure I'm not, I could not say for sure it will be change uh, the ra- results, but uh, but at least it will be more like some fight or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay. And um, when we talk about like these situations where maybe, I don't know, you know, as here where, where it was like a clear loss or something where it's maybe a bit of frustration or a disappointment, I also found online that in the Women's Grand Prix in 2013, uh, you had basically an end game with the Bishop and Knight against the Lone King, um, against Olga Guria. Yeah. And the game actually ended in a draw as you're unable to checkmate within 50 moves. And um, I was wondering if you how you felt during that situation and um, again whether these things stay with you for a long time or if you're kind of good at like kind of I don't know being annoyed about them or upset about them but then kind of putting them away uh, yes it was very very funny uh, well uh, the, that uh, the day it was very uh, hard uh, hard game um, uh I mean, the game was actually hard because it's like was uh, before uh, we achieve uh, that position, I didn't be so, but it was like maybe five or more hours before. And mm-hmm. like with a lot of calculations and Olga defended well, you know, and it was a really hard game. And after we achieved this position and uh, already like... Uh, I don't know, I guess not in best uh, physical conditions and uh, just, uh, <laughs> I'm, of course, I learned this uh, uh, stuff and I know how to make it, but uh, during the game, when you have, uh, I don't know, limited time, 30 seconds or something, or one minute, like, uh, it's like looking like King go out, you know. <laughs> escape from from the corner and uh, well it was in the draw but okay nothing bad happened like okay it's not a strategy not the finish of uh, of the life you know okay it just happened for sure uh, another grandmaster could make uh, also a lot of mistakes so 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I actually saw uh, quite a lot of uh, games of title players come someone like put them all together and you're clearly not the only one and as I said like with the time pressure and stuff. Yes, you uh, know like of course if normally you okay, if you relax, you know like okay, you you have this position okay, just you know very easy. But you know after 5 hours okay, it's not excuse. I just uh, I just say how it was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, okay, like g getting rid of that negative thoughts. Um, and yeah. let, let's focus on something. It's just funny. Again. <laughs> yeah, let's focus on something super positive again, because you actually in 2016 added another prestigious trophy to your collection because you won the European Women's Championship as well. Yeah, true. And uh, you played a really strong tournament, I think. You were unbeaten, so only draws and wins, not a single loss. And um, yeah, yeah. And, so it uh, was in Romania. Yeah. So again, tell us a little bit about that the tournament. Um, and because you were in the lead of the table for quite a long time, I think from round eight onwards. And basically, is that already when you start thinking of okay, I can win this title, or is this still like so early in the tournament that, that anything could happen, and you're just focusing on the individual games and are still pretty calm? Uh well um I guess um I already want uh, wanted to to want to win the tournament because uh, it's like uh, you understand like uh, no because uh, the tournament I feel like I play well and uh, and I control my game and uh, I feel like uh, I could win uh, the tournament in the end I mean not from the first round of course like uh, but. Uh, in the end of the tournament, I already feel like I, I, I could do that, you know, just need to be a bit uh, uh, accurate and uh, I hope, like, I will win. Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, that did happen and, um, I mean, that was an, another success you had. And I was wondering, you know, by that time you had won so many... So many things. You had won the European Championship and the, the World Championship title, and so many Olympiads. What what still keeps you going after all that? Like, what kind of do you still have a specific ambition, or is it just that you enjoy chess? Mm, well, um, I don't know. Maybe I, I win some tournament, and after I relax or something. I don't know. Maybe. Something like that, and maybe some bad tournaments after, and uh, I again want. I think, okay, what is this? I want to win some like tournaments or something, and start to um, maybe more serious or something. I don't know how to explain that, but uh, I just like uh, to play chess, and uh, if you win some title or something, it's not over. You just want to continue and to. To win uh, more games, uh, to play uh, nice chess, uh, some ideas in the game, not only some some lines or something, you know. <laughs> now mm -hmm. chess has uh, become very popular, like some lines only, engine or something. You prepare at home with engine, and after you come and just show what engine says, you know. This is like something very strange. I like some ideas or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess like a, a lot of it's true that like the computers and stuff changed a lot of, of the chess. Yes, yes, because uh, now a lot of people just prepare lines and uh, it's like you play against lines, you know, like what engines say. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe we can change topic a little bit because you already mentioned before that you're also doing a little bit of coaching. And I also saw that during Corona, you basically were putting a post on your Instagram saying you're looking for more students. And I was wondering whether, uh, whether you, how you feel about the coaching, if this is something you also very much enjoy and how many students you have, for example. Well, yes, I like uh, I like coaching, and, um, and for now I don't have a lot of students because I have no much time. But some some I have. Uh, um, well, they're improving. <laughs> uh, it's quite interesting, you know, like uh, uh, to see how it works. Like uh, you explain something, and after how it works with. Uh, Mm, with uh, students it helps how they improve or not improve you know it's very also it's 
another part uh, of uh, chess because competition is one part and coaching is another. So I guess many players uh, after also take this another part <laughs> enjoying to play to coaching, you know, because I know some players, also active players so for now, also make coaching stuff. Yeah, um, and, and the people you coach is like individual people and they're very strong players or they're amateur players. Uh, well, mostly it's am am uh, amateur, amateur, like mm -hmm. uh, they just want to improve uh, something, improve rating or something, you know, opening, uh, whatever. <laughs> Do you feel that the coaching sometimes also helps your own chess? Like, because you go through like very basic things again, or maybe sometimes people say that when they explain stuff, they, they also help them to remember, or is it you feel that doesn't affect your own chess very much? Uh, well, it's... Uh... I guess it depends uh, which level um, of students you have. Uh, if you have more, um, uh, more how to say, uh, more advanced students, it helps you because, uh, uh, for example, even uh, these end games or something, you you watch uh, them and you also like improve. Um, once one time was. Um, Uh, uh, with me happening like uh, I was working with uh, or one grandmaster was working with me <laughs> was also say like that cooperation or something you know but mm -hmm. not very strong not not uh, top or something like uh, uh, basic level <laughs> like mm -hmm. 500 or even less like uh, like that I will not tell the name but anyway <laughs> uh, and after I don't know maybe uh, half months or something like of this uh, cooperation he won some tournament you know unexpected oh. so, so for him that's for sure was uh, was very good you know so yeah you should take absolutely you should take some of these credits <laughs> yes yes <laughs> okay cool interesting um Maybe we talk because we just talked about how chess was changed through engines. We can also take talk about one of the other big changes which we had in chess, which was basically that during Corona, especially the online chess got yeah, quite. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, um, it's it's getting more popular, very popular during Corona when everybody stuck at home and what to do. Let's play chess online. Yes. <laughs> And you also play tournaments online. Do you just also sometimes play? So, like I saw for sure, you played the women's speed chess championship. Yes, yes, true, true. Was lucky. Was very lucky there. You would say you were lucky because I think again it was like a knockout system at the beginning, and you made it into the uh, the final, which was incredibly close and very nerve wrenching. I have to say. Yes, um, but I was very lucky. Yes, but also without lucky, you cannot win. But. Uh, At the time, um, of course, uh, I guess uh, Gunina should be in final because uh, she she lost to to whom she lose she lost to somebody and did not go to final. I guess because mm -hmm. uh, I was like I was watching um, watching like three or something with whom she will play and uh, I was thinking okay I'm not going to final it's like uh, almost like 99% because she played very well uh, blitz and I was sure she will uh, go to the final you know like uh, mm -hmm. I was not expected to play final <laughs> But then you made it and it, it went very well. And it's how do you feel about these like short time controls? Like it was, I think, five minutes, three minutes and one minute both with a one second increment. Is that something you generally enjoy? Uh, well, actually, um, um, before I did not like so much, but uh, this uh, one minute, uh, uh, like uh, sometime before, before this was the tournament, maybe I don't know, like... Uh, half a year before like uh, I was curious what is this why people like this one minute but I played uh, what is this what uh, what uh, because like you play fast and uh, and what it's like no chess you know I was thinking and mm -hmm. after I was trying myself but I, I was played without increment you know like uh, 
just one minute. <laughs> and uh, after that, uh, I played almost uh, all my games one minute. So, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it was one part of uh, my su- success because uh, I train uh, one minute, you know, without uh, knowing that it will be useful for me after. <laughs> Do you still sometimes nowadays just play these one minute games, I don't know, in the evening or something for fun? Or did you stop again? Well, now I play it uh, much less because uh, I understood like for, for real chess, it's not very useful, you know, <laughs> just mm. because you just play with hand and uh, you miss a lot of opportunities and... Um, I don't know. It's sometimes in the end, it's like uh, who have better internet, who have better pre-move, uh, move. And uh, mm-hmm. now I I don't play so much. Like sometimes, but uh, not uh, like before. Yeah. And I guess another problem about these internet tournaments is also that cheating is always a big thing. I guess not so much in the bullet games, but I, I don't know if you have followed the, the recent chess drama uh around Hans Niemann and and uh, that he admitted cheating in these online games before but uh I don't know if you, if you follow these things at all well I, I saw news uh, because uh, like uh, like Magnus uh, quiet the tournament uh, after loose uh, with white uh, and I did not understand why and uh, well I still do not understand why actually because uh, I don't know like uh, maybe he knows something better or something or well I don't know personally his opponent uh, but I guess every uh, grandmaster in that level can play some games uh, well even with black Mm. I don't know for me I say like I don't know (laughs) yeah I I mean like I also don't know and um, but I think what one of the discussions this brought up again is it's just that we see that in online chess, not so much over the board, I think, but online chess cheating just is much more common. And um, I guess it's a question on, on how much that, for example, also harms online chess. Well, I don't know. Like sometimes I, I hear like uh, even uh, like live tournament, uh, somebody say, ah, oh, I played with some opponent and I'm sure he was cheating or something. But uh, but what is this like what I'm sure only because uh, he played some game strong or what uh, mm-hmm. like uh, uh, I don't understand this like if you have some proofs like you search him and you found mm-hmm. something I don't know like because some games uh, everybody can play strong and um, but okay online chess maybe it's a bit different because you cannot uh, uh, check your opponent like personally yes um, mm-hmm. Well, this, uh, I don't know, but I'm sure like uh, uh, many strong, like almost all strong grandmasters who who play don't, I don't know, cannot do this. It's just because like, uh, uh, you just cannot do this because like, what is this? It's, uh, if you do some bad stuff, it's like, uh, it's kill chess, you know, it's mm. like, what is this? No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe let's move away a bit a little bit from the the, the the hardcore chess talk, I would say. Um I have some more questions for you, maybe I don't know, a bit like more personal, because first of all I read that you received a honored master of sports award. I'm not sure how good the English translation is. <laughs> um whether you even know what I'm talking about. But I think it's like a national award you obtained that's like can be given to all sports people. So sorry, national award and I think in Wikipedia is considered the honored master of sports. Uh, I think it's like probably like a national award you received or something. Cool. Mm, I'm not national my master or my national grand master. Uh, you mean this or what? No, no. I think it's like a more like it's nothing like a not a title in chess, but like a, a something like a an award you receive from from the Ukraine or from from your country. No. Oh well, <laughs> it's no? curious. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe it's a bad translation. Okay. No, well. I no, I I, I receive some uh, like uh, order or something like uh, some uh, of uh, government stuff like. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. This, uh, yes, this I was uh, received. Uh, yes, it's uh, like 
like uh, something from government for for achievement like uh, some like results or something yes it was like that and it's like a big thing that is like chess specific or no this is open no no to no it's uh, it's for for it can achieve every I guess it can achieve uh, every person. It's not connection to chess, nothing to, like. It's just uh, some award of uh, government. Yeah. Okay, interesting. But for you, like, it, it's something like it was something special that was awarded at a big ceremony or something. Or? Uh, yes. Well, it was given by president, and uh, well, of course, the time uh, it was like something specific, but mm -hmm. uh, but. Um, now it's like quite usual <laughs> <laughs> i see what you mean yeah. yeah yeah okay and um maybe also another personal question so if you don't play chess what what other like what do you have to also keep you busy maybe other hobbies besides you mean my job or something if i don't play chess Yeah, like not, well, do you have a job or else what you do in your leisure time, you know, if you need to like switch off from chess and just need a, a break for a little bit? <laughs> Oof, it's very hard, hard because uh, if no, chess not exists at all, yeah. uh, I guess I would do some stuff low, uh, like uh, uh, lawyer or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if now like after playing chess and to be someone else, um well i'm not sure <laughs> it's very hard no i cannot imagine me my life without chess yeah but for example do you i don't know like is there something when you have i don't know like a after a tournament when you need a few days off is there something you enjoy doing whether it's sport or traveling or yes. i don't know Yes, I enjoy traveling, yes, but yeah? uh, I don't think uh, uh, it could be a job, you know? <laughs> no, no, not as a job, more as a hobby, I guess. A hobby, because like chess is your profession, right? But then like what the hobbies that you have, like traveling, for example? Yes, yeah. yes, I like I like tra traveling, uh, like uh, like visiting, you know, like uh, some historical, especially historical places, very like... Uh, unusual some museums with this uh, famous painting you know like something something like that yeah. and, and it's very nice combinable i guess with chess because you must have traveled to so many different countries for for playing chess tournaments and then for example do you sometimes take some extra days at the end to to i don't know visit the area uh well sometimes uh, you have free day or something um well if uh, it's a very interesting place of course you will uh, take some extra extra day or something but uh, usually um, before before just uh, you play tournament and you go home you play mm -hmm. tournament you go home and during the tournament you're concentrated on the tournament you don't see and you don't want to watch uh, anything And after the tournament, you go home. But now I like more to something to watch around and to see how it's going on. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like that, a bit changed yeah. to my, my view, <laughs> my point of view. Yeah. And do you have any more tournaments lined up for the next few months? Do you already know what you're going to play next? Well, uh, mm, some uh, strong event, it will be... Uh, European Chess Club Cup. This uh, will be like most, uh, I guess, most important this year. Maybe something more. Not sure yet. <laughs> so where where will the European Club Cup take place, and which team are you playing for? In Austria and for Austria. Ah, okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> we will enjoy in Austria this time. Yeah. Interesting. And have you, so when, when is it going to start? It should be pretty soon. Uh, yes, uh, it, it's from uh, 2nd October till 10. Yeah, okay. Well, I hope you have some time before or after because Austria is actually beautiful to visit. <laughs> I very much like it. <laughs> yes, um, yes, yes. Is there, maybe for our listeners I can ask, is there any tournament that you particularly like for example either because of the location or the side events that you could for example 
recommend to also like amateur players so of course you can't recommend the olympiad because we'll never make it there <laughs> but maybe maybe a nice open or something uh well um uh, i could recommend um uh, opens in italia uh mm-hmm. in summer there are a lot of uh, tournaments and uh also like uh, for hobby hobby players like uh, and usually it's located um, uh, very nice uh, place like maybe near sea or some island or something like that so they can um, they can look uh, more in such a way you know to italy or something europe very nice places some yeah. somebody join also Spain, spain so I don't know, but Spain also I like to play in summer, very good weather, like um, possible to like relax uh, and also to play chess. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have to look into the south, I guess. <laughs> yes, yes, there is good weather. Yeah. Okay, then maybe we're already pretty much at the end of our podcast, but maybe a closing question that we also ask uh a lot of people before on this podcast so basically this podcast is part as i said of the feed a year woman in chess and the idea was to first of all introduce people like you to our listeners so they have a bit more of a who the person actually is um and what what else apart from this podcast would you think that feeder could do to support players like you or women in chess um Oh, well, it's a good question. Uh, I guess uh, I guess it's important to to to, to develop uh, more chess in schools for mm-hmm. more more players uh, who join chess, more girls uh, who join chess. Because, in my opinion, now uh, more boys playing chess and girls like a bit less. Or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But uh, more chess in the school, and uh, maybe some more tournaments just for women or something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Are you generally? Because I guess there's also maybe one one last question. Because it's also quite a controversial topic whether there should be women or female specific tournaments or whether they should always play in the open section. Does that mean you're quite supportive of the female tournaments? I like uh, female tournaments because uh, uh, to be uh, on the same level with men, it's quite difficult because also it's like uh, uh, many stuff because also women make more stuff than men, I, in my opinion. Like, you know, uh, I don't know, she need to go to, to, to this hairdresser to buy nice clothes, to look well, you know, but men don't need this you know they can wear some suit suit and that's all and they are nice you know and what women can make should make more stuff and also i guess main problem is with uh, with coach with trainer uh, because if you want to be top you need to work i don't know 10 hours per day with uh, with very strong coach and play all the time uh, only men tournament like uh, you did, did you know like uh, it's not uh, like for everybody. I don't think like for now, like women can make this. Of course, maybe some of uh, them can make, but uh, mostly not. So I guess should be like more women tournaments, in my opinion. It's only my opinion. Yeah, no, it is it's very interesting because as I said, uh, I'm I'm also a supporter of the the women tournaments but i know that sometimes they're very controversial no i like to no i like also to play uh, uh men tournaments it's also um, nice to play there and i like it i enjoy but uh, it's hard to win pride there you know <laughs> if you playing with i don't know uh, to, to 2700 uh, well it's hard to win them you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for your opinion on that and generally for taking the time today to come on our podcast and tell the listeners a little bit about your amazing career in chess and all the successes you had. And it was very interesting to get a bit of an insight. So thank you very much for being our guest today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for everybody.